What's up, Jay here, and welcome to my first official review unit review video. So I was contacted by the folks over at iFi, and they sent out the Micro iDAC 2 for me to do a review on. So as you can see, it comes in this little box like so. I figured I'd kind of do a little unboxing. Cover slips off. It's got nice iFi lettering. Pull off the top, and here's the unit itself. So yeah, and there you have it, the iFi iDAC 2. All right, well thanks for checking out the video. I hope you enjoyed it. No, kidding. Put that back there. Maybe leave that standing up right there. How's that look? Is that good? Okay, so there's going to be a lot of information in this video as the iDAC 2 is a very complex piece of hardware. Now, while technically the iDAC 2 is a DAC amp unit, the DAC is the main feature with the, uh, the amp portion kind of taking a back seat. Okay, so the iDAC is capable of processing three different formats. PCM, DSD, and DXD. So with the PCM and DSD formats, there are three filters each. The PCM has a standard, min phase, and bit perfect. And the DSD format has standard range, extended, and extreme filters. And finally, the DXD is fixed at bit perfect processing. So I'm honestly not too sure exactly what these filters mean or what they do for that matter. Uh, there's not really anything in the manual or documentation that I've been able to see and I honestly can't tell a difference between the uh, the settings and the way that they sound. So for the amp portion of the iDAC 2, it is a Class A amplifier with an output impedance of less than 2 ohms and is capable of pushing 350 milliwatts into 16 ohms or 34 milliwatts into 300 ohms. So as you can tell from those specs, it is a decent amp, but it's nothing spectacular. And since it's limited to the USB power, it doesn't have a lot of headroom. It's not able to push a lot of power into high impedance loads. So now for the outside of the unit, you can see on the back, we have that selector switch for the filters. So it's labeled with the uh, PCM filters, so there's standard at the bottom, min phase in the middle, and then uh, bit perfect up top. We have our USB 3.0 type B port for our digital inputs, and then there is a SPDIF digital out on the back. As you can see, I haven't taken the uh, little protector off there because I have nothing to use it for, but it's there if you need it. Coming around to the front, we can see the RCA outputs are at the front, and then there's a an eighth inch headphone jack and the volume knob for the headphones or for the headphone amplifier. Now I do want to note that the volume knob does not act as a preamp. So this is solely for the amp for the headphones. The volume adjustment does not affect the output of the, uh, the RCAs at all. This is simply a, a straight line out from the DAC. So the unit is portable. You can, with, a, uh, with an on-the-go cable, you can hook it up to your phone or tablet and it powers it just fine. So the idea, I think, with the, with the headphone amp is that it gives you a good DAC and a decent amp if you want to bring it with you somewhere, or you would generally have this in line with your system. So you could have it sitting somewhere, you'd feed the source into the back and then the line out, out the front, and that would go directly into your amplifier uh, elsewhere, and you would have this kind of tucked away somewhere. So coming around to the front, there are three LEDs. There's one for power, even though there's no like power switch, so it's just always on. Um, there's also this other one, it looks like a little computer monitor. Uh, it too always seems to be on when it's plugged in, uh, so I don't really know what the purpose of these two are. And then you have this little kind of play button and this will flash green if it's not receiving a signal. So I imagine if you had a USB cable that only had the data conductors or something and you plug that in with this, then the light here would be powered but it wouldn't be getting any data signals so that would flash maybe to tell you that you're using a bad, a bad cable or an incompatible cable. Other than that, the light here on the front, this little play button one actually changes color depending on the 
sample rate of the music playing. So there's green, so it'll be a green light for 44 or 48 kilohertz, a yellow light for 88 or 96 kilohertz, a cyan light for 176 or 192 kilohertz, a white light for DXD, and a blue light for DSD 2.8 or 3.1 megahertz, and a magenta light for the higher DSD sample rates of up to 12.2 megahertz. So now that I've gotten all of that out of the way, on to the review. So I'm gonna start by getting the amp portion out of the way, since it is kind of incidental to the unit and it's not really the main reason why you would want to buy it. But that being said, the amp is actually surprisingly good for not being the main feature. So I was very impressed. It, it has a very clean sound and it's capable of driving both the LCD2s and my HD650s, and I can really crank up the volume and not get any distortion. That being said, obviously with the 34 milliwatts into 300 ohms, uh, it'll get the 650s loud enough, but it's not, there's not quite enough there to really fully drive them, and the bass can be a little bit lacking. And I have noticed too that the highs inside of the amp can be a little harsh, a little grating, but overall that's more in comparison to say the, uh, the Jotunheim as, in, as far as sound quality goes. Uh, for, for a real comparison of sound quality, I would compare it with the O2, uh, to a lesser extent, the Fulla and probably like the Magni 2, although amps like the O2 and the Magni 2 are going to put out a lot more power as they have a dedicated power source. So sound quality wise, I would put this on par with those, but power wise and drivability wise, the O2 and the Magni 2 definitely have a leg up on the amp inside the, uh, the IDAC here. But like I said, those are dedicated amps and this is just a, an amp feature added on to a DAC. So now on to the DAC portion of the iDAC 2. So I've been using the iDAC 2 in place of my Modi 2 uh, feeding into my Jotunheim for a couple weeks now and switching back and forth between my LCD 2s, my 650s, my K7XXs, just trying to get a feel for it using all those headphones. And I was actually fairly surprised at what I heard when I switched back to the Modi 2 after a couple of weeks of using the iDAC. So I've always bought into the idea that once you reach a certain point with a DAC, you know, how much better can it get? The, the idea behind it, the theory behind it is very simple and our sample rates are getting so large or so condensed now that you essentially have almost your full, your full sine wave uh, of, of data going into the DAC. So, you know, how much, how much of a variance can there really be? And while it is a very minute variance, there must be something with either the implementation in the chip, the way that it actually converts those those uh, zeros and ones to to the the actual analog sound. Uh, maybe in theory it's it's very straightforward, but when you actually get to implementing it in a chip, it's not so much, and maybe it doesn't work quite the way they expect it to. Or it could just be better components. The uh, one of the things that the iFi kind of prides himself on is the quality of all of their components inside of the iDAC and, and all of their, their units for that matter. But whatever it is that makes a DAC, one DAC different from another, whether it's the components, the implementation, the design, whatever it is, after having gotten used to using the iDAC and switching back to the Modi 2, I, I noticed that the, the iDAC just has like a, a slightly fuller, smoother sound a, the bass extension is a little bit better. It's a little bit fuller in the bass, whereas the Modi 2 by comparison just has a slightly thinner sound. It's a little bit harsher in the highs, a little bit lacking in the bass, and the iDAC 2 just kind of ekes out a little bit more detail. That being said, like I mentioned before, uh, as far as those filter, that filter switch goes between the standard, uh, what is it? Uh, between the, the standard, the min phase, and the bit perfect, Maybe if I did like, I sat down and I took a long time to just listen to one and then switch to the other and I would be able to notice the difference kind of the way that I did switching to the, uh, the back to the Modi after listening to the iDAC for a while. But ultimately I can't really tell a difference between these different filters. So maybe my amp's just not good enough. Maybe my 
uh, headphones aren't quite resolving enough. Maybe I could use some stacks or something and then and then I'd be able to tell. Who knows? Overall, I was very impressed with the iDAC 2. I was actually uh, pleasantly surprised to find out that you can actually find a DAC that sounds different from another DAC. And that was really what, I, what I've been hoping to find out in this venture, is to, uh, to, to, to figure out these little differences and how much of a difference it is. Now, is the iDAC worth the $250 markup over the Modi? Uh, that's, that's really a tough question. I think personally for me, maybe not. I mean, a $350 price tag is quite hefty, and once you get up into that range, then you're you're breaching into uh, to access of good amps like the Jotunheim, which have a big feature set themselves, being able to power pretty much any headphone, having very clean power, very smooth sound. You know, all the uh, the inputs and the outputs and the balanced preamp. Uh, the, the ability for the phono DAC module. I mean, you get all of that for $50 more than this. But that being said, the DAC in this is, is very good and it can be a nice portable unit. But then the other question is, if you're going for a portable unit like the, uh, that's, that's something this size, how much, how does say like the, uh, the Oppo HA1 or HA, no, what is it? HA2? How does, how does the Oppo, 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 whatever it is, how does the Oppo Ha2 compare to this thing? Because I'm pretty sure they're the same price. Or that one might actually be 50 bucks less. And it has a built-in battery. But all that being said, if you have a, uh, a collection of DSD files in your library, or you have some SACDs or something where you need to be able to decode the DSD and take advantage of that, then the iDAC here certainly fits that bill. All right, guys, well, that about does it for this review. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, feel free to give it a thumbs down, but please let me know why in the comments. Let me know what I could be doing better. As always, I am trying to constantly improve my videos and do things a little bit differently from time to time. Uh, please feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. I am going to be trying to put out many more videos, or at least not many, well yeah, many more, but uh, more consistent videos, and I have a new uh, method for going about that, so hopefully it works out for me and I'm not going one month between each video. Well, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.